Hey, so to quickly explain the context for it, the following video. This is from a session when I was fixing compatibility for interpolation. Uh, that is getting my drawings to a place um, in this font where they could be variable uh, and interpolate into intermediate instances. I was kind of in a round of fixing that, so I figured, hey, I'll record this process in both RoboFont and in Glyphs. I do this more in RoboFont, so my video about that, which I've posted previously, uh, I think it's the previous one on my channel, uh, that's a little longer. I go into more depth. In this video, I'm showing a little more at a surface level in Glyphs. Um, it's possible that there are some pro tips I missed, and if you're watching this and you know of some, leave a comment. Uh, I'm sure people might be interested in that in the future. Um, but I know that there's probably people out there, and in fact, uh, somewhat recently a type design student asked me like, can you make a video about interpolation and fixing compatibility because I'm feeling kind of lost. And to be upfront, there are some good tutorials on the Glyphs app website about this, just some like blog posts, but you know, not everybody learns the best from written information. I usually learn the best from seeing somebody do something and actually go through all the steps of doing it kind of in real time and describing what they think about it as they're doing it. Um, or, you know, maybe both are helpful. Uh, you know how you work. If this is useful for you, that's awesome. Um, and yeah, if you know more about it than I'm able to show here, leave a comment. Uh, I'm, I'm also really interested in learning better ways to do this in Glyphs. Uh, though, as I kind of describe at the very end of this video, there are a few reasons why I still prefer to fix compatibility across sources in RoboFont. Um, though, you know, the Glyphs way is pretty good, and I have a font or two which are uh, mostly being handled, almost entirely being handled in Glyphs. So, yeah, I'm kind of agnostic. Both programs are really awesome. Uh, so, if you use Glyphs, here is some information for you. Let's just do a very basic thing and pop these open and um, rather than show all instances let's go to the medium which I have set up as an instance pretty much just so we can do this namely um, seeing how things interpolate at a very basic level so this is pretty much just in the middle of the design space it's 500 the weight goes from 1 to 1000 so you can see that some of the glyphs, including some of the ones we just fixed, like O and S, are working perfectly fine. Um, but in glyphs, let's go through and just start kind of um, fixing these. And I'm going to try that kind of basic spacing string script so I have a slightly better idea of how these shapes are actually working in context. Um, so A is looking fine. What is going on here? What the? Oh, I see. The N is not yet um, interpolating. All right, so that would be uh, an important one to fix first because it is a control character. So let's give ourselves a little bit of space on either side just so it's easier to work with. And I'm going to go to the middle bold uh, source here. All right, so I should probably start again by saying like what needs to happen for interpolation to work. You need the same number of points in the same order uh, from the same number of contours, which is like each closed path, uh, which are also in the same order. And the contours need to be winding in the same direction. So the point order has to be either clockwise or counterclockwise the same way for your contours. So that's, uh, and also actually, uh, you need your anchors to match and you need to make sure, um, this is a little more of a challenge uh, in RoboFont world, but you need to make sure that the Unicode is the same for all the glyphs. So yeah, it's kind of like a number of things there, but once you get used to it, it's not too terrible. So actually, uh, Glyphs has a pretty funky way of dealing with this. In some ways, it's great, uh, for sure. But 
I don't know. It, it depends how many sources you have. So first of all, I'm just going to make the very corner node first. I can see that it's winding counterclockwise, so that's good. I always try to keep the exterior shapes winding counterclockwise. Now, OK, this is kind of a wild interface here. Um, let's uh, open a new tab real quick. OK, because this is, is kind of like a wild looking thing if you're not used to it. So if we first of all select all of the points here, you can see that there's this whole spider web and that like wild crisscrossing is indicating that the interpolation is not going to work well, uh, or maybe not at all. Um, but the, well, let me test one thing. If we remove a point entirely, what happens? Okay, it's still there actually. So we don't wanna do that anyway. I put the point in the lower left corner. And so what we can do actually in Glyphs is if we're viewing master compatibility, we can just literally drag the point order differently. So this goes from start point to start point and like that. And actually this points out to me that I should probably have an intermediate instance between bold and ultra because right now medium is actually just between hairline and bold and not picking up the ultra at all. So might as well um, add an instance here and we'll call it uh, extra bold. Or actually I think black is basically in the middle. Right, we've got this. If I show all instances that can be useful if there are like intermediates like this. Maybe let's sort them like this. Um, lighter to bolder. Okay, so we see that our interpolation is working pretty decently here. Um, now, if we go back here, hmm, I'm actually sort of, oh, the O is also messed up, the lowercase O. All right, cool. So this is a really good example, actually, of where we have two contours. So similar, if you just watched how I did this in RoboFont tools, um, we need to make sure our contours are in the same order and have the same number of points and the same winding direction. Again, we have this wild crisscrossing, so that's not gonna work. Um, let's zoom in a lot. And okay, so my first contour is the exterior that is going counterclockwise as indicated by this little arrow. The other one is a two, so that's nice. Um, so let's see, I'll just try to drag this over here. Oops, where is it? You kind of have to like intuitively know where the um, points are gonna be in the background. And okay, here's an interesting thing actually. Um, this technically is working, but it's all messed up because um, the like counter is flipping here between these two. So you actually wanna bring it over here and okay, now that's the like actual progression. Um, something that should be mentioned is that a guy named uh, Mark Fromberg, who goes by the name Mark to Mark, has a pretty popular plugin for glyphs called, I think, Variable Font Preview. I don't do as much of my variable font like work in glyphs. Um, I do like the, the, the RoboFont path for that, so I kind of use Skateboard instead. Um, yeah. And actually, another one that should be mentioned is that um, you can even open up design space files or glyphs files i think and font goggles directly which is a great little font testing thing maybe i know you can do it with design spaces and it just kind of like okay well it tries to compile a variable font for you um but here we've got a bunch of like uh issues that it can't get past which is why something like skateboard or variable font preview is nice because um, it's a lot less likely that you'll crash those things as you're working.
Okay, so now once we get our string back to order, now this is looking like a spacing string again. Nice. All right. So we'll do like one more. The D should be working. What is, oh, the C is not yet working. Okay. So crisscrossing. Um, let's zoom in. Okay, it's actually the interior one, whatever. I'll make it easy and do the kind of very top one because it's easy to remember. And there we go. And it shows up. Nice. All right. Um, let's go back. And actually, Glyphs has one more thing that's worth knowing about where you can just straight up like go to a filter that's just incompatible masters. And this shows you everything in the family that's incompatible, uh, everything in the uh, masters in the current font that's incompatible. So that might be a lot more of a direct way where we could just like open it all up. Um, and some of these things are incompatible because like they were kind of sketches or throwaway ideas in one of the uh, sources or another. But, um, you know, obviously some of these are very basic things that I want to work. And, uh, oh, here's another instance where there's actually two contours here um, to deal with this stem issue. And we need to make sure that that's the case everywhere. Okay. This one. I can tell that my muscle memory is a lot more used to working in uh, glyphs right now than in RoboFont because of all my recent um, variable font fixing. Okay, so here's a nice uh, example of another concept that's important to know for glyphs, which is uh, reordering the contour count. So if you hit Command R, you get this window pane, which shows you uh, the, I wonder if I can zoom in, I can't zoom in here. And the hairline is like almost disappearing. But uh, if you have your resolution turned up and if the video is working, um, this middle bar is uh, like highlighted in a navy here, um, but here on the second row, it's uh, is where the middle bars are there. So we can just simply uh, drag these around, and that reordered the sorting for that letter, or for that glyph rather, and then. Let's uh, go back here. Okay, it's the bottom left. So we need to move it to there. And okay, so that should be the top left. Seems like that, okay, maybe it is working and we're just not showing all the instances. All right, great, nice. Yep, that is now working well. And oh, by the way, if you select all the points, and the interpolation is good, it'll look more like this, where most of them are basically straight lines through all the masters. So rather than this crisscrossiness, you get straight uh, lines. So that's the kind of inside corner of the spur. Let's do that. Cool. All right, so yeah, you can see those straight lines of interpolation. And what that's saying, uh, I guess if it's not totally clear already, um, which, why would it be? Um, each point in an interpolation kind of moves, um, <laughs> like uh, it, it interpolates, literally, uh, if there's a mathematical concept called interpolation where you go from one number to another um, in kind of, in this 
case, a linear interpolation way. So when you're 50% between this shape and this shape, uh, the point moves a certain amount. So yeah, this is kind of visualizing how each point moves um, from one master or source to the next source. And so you want them to be straight, which indicates that they're kind of like sorted in the same way. Yeah. Um, this is another, well, actually, this is probably an instance where, oh, no, it's just a sorting instance. So we'll hit Command R. And let's make sure our I is on top in each case. And our start points are the same. It is interesting actually that the ultra here is showing as one green color, which would seemingly indicate that it's just one um, contour, but it's clearly not. Well, I don't always understand glyphs. Um, Hmm. Or any font editor for that matter. They all have their quirks. Uh, sometimes. So maybe this is, uh, this is probably a case of there being like a differing number of control points. Uh, Maybe um, that would be something I would check if I were in uh, RoboFont right now. No. We'll see even this, oh yeah, of course that's gonna look messed up now. Huh. Oh, could it be, aha, uh -huh, it's the winding direction. Okay, so these are counterclockwise, but these are pointing in a clockwise direction. So if we reverse them, okay, oof. That is something I'm less familiar with the glyphs way of displaying, uh, so I guess that's why I didn't think about it. Um, but I, I should recognize that actually the blue lines were still kind of mixed up in a strange way. So yeah, this kind of is similarly indicating that they are reversed from their natural position. Okay, and then the other thing worth mentioning is that these dotted lines are showing anchors. So here's a better example of that, where there's like a top and a bottom anchor. Um, there should probably be like an Ogonek anchor here, potentially, as well. Uh, but I don't know, I might, I might think about that later as well. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm, now that I'm, I have done a number of glyphs, I actually might go back to UFO sources, um, the, uh, glyphs to UFO, which is kind of also from glyphs lib and it's the reverse, uh, thing as we just did because... I don't know, I never like to throw work away. And, aha, uh -huh. once again, reversed. Okay, so if I mash all these, that will reverse it. Is it are I not, am I not doing it? Whatever. I was just 
having, I don't know, difficulty hitting the right amount of shortcut keys. But there we go. Um, let's tap it into there. And it kind of like magnetically snaps to the point, which helps a lot. Okay, reversing contours is a very common need. Sometimes, like, uh, there's not room for ink traps uh, in the hairline, so I've just overlapped the points. It seems to work without issue. Okay. This is faint, but I believe that was a problem. And let's... these similar okay yeah so you can see that a lot of it is just ordering reversing and uh yeah <laughs> and setting the start points to be the same and that's why it's really nice to use prepolator next the vast majority of times it seems to get things right um so in general it's a lot faster um to sort of automate it because most of these shapes can be automatically fixed. And this is like, I guess, a fun process in that you can make uh, progress at it once you know what you're doing. But also, like, I the, the goal here is to make it work and then build some fonts so I can start to proof them and actually improve them and finish uh, or get closer to the finish line.